there's no doubt that whatever you want to call it, whether it's learning loss, learning lag, unfinished learning, I don't care the political term you choose to use. With only 16% of K-8 through students meeting standards for literacy and only 7% for math. You guys are second only to Detroit or Cleveland and Detroit. What are we doing within the district? What are we doing in leadership? The scary part is it's not just a money game. Whose voices are we listening to? I've heard a lot about, you know, adults being tired and Okay, but our kids are tired too. Fresno parents have heard real change takes years for years already. The students of today don't have time to wait for the solutions of tomorrow. There's no magic bullet to improve the dismal performance of Fresno Unified. And there's a constant call for accountability that Fresno parents feel is being ignored by an administration that behaves as though they're unfireable. The numbers don't lie. And for Fresno Unified, they're the brutal reminder of the entirety of the district leadership's performance. Statistics buried in confusing reports and menus on government websites are now becoming a focus for parent advocates. Parents are likely to believe their child is performing well in school if their kids are moving from grade to grade with no contact from teachers about performance. Not many parents know the difference between asking, is my kid passing and is my kid performing at grade level? And maybe that's only half the problem. I think that parents would be outraged if they had all of the information. One of the, the biggest issues is that you know, parent, not every parent is an education expert. And we sit with our, our teachers and our principals and they say our kids are, are doing good or they're behaving well and our schools look nice and everyone at the school site is friendly and that's all well and good. Um, but academic performance isn't always made transparent um, to, our, to our families. I think the subject of parent engagement is, is really a complex one because there's multiple factors. Um, you know, we live in a community that um, by, large, by large matters is, is in poverty, um, where you have people that have to make a living and, um, you know, asking for them to do one more thing when um, they're struggling to put food on the table or to think about all kinds of other things, matters of life and death, especially now with the pandemic, um, it's just one more thing that they, they just can't focus on right now. This isn't about parents against teachers or teachers against parents or pointing the finger, right? It's a system. It's a system that, that hasn't been working and that needs to be changed. Looking at the school district and, and, and putting all the responsibility of, of learning on the school district when there's so many other aspects to it. Um, I'm not trying to absolve of responsibility because we need to be accountable to the, to the earlier point for our peace but it's just everybody has to be accountable for their peace, for a kid to grow up um, healthy, emotionally, uh, you know, regulated, um, and able to learn and adapt and, and do all the things that we need them to do for a productive society. Our trustees often orient through a lens of, these are my constituents and I need to be responsive to my community um, in live time. Many of them try to be magnanimous and represent the district as a whole but they also know that they're elected on the basis of the constituency that represented them there. So it creates a dynamic. This district is broken from the very tippy top to the very bottom bottom. By broken, I mean zero accountability. I'm gonna say that 25% turnover is not good. You darn well better agree that 0% turnover is not good either. Now, periodically somebody will come here from an adjoining district get an opportunity in the big pond, and they're always gone after two years. And it's always this, well, they couldn't adjust to our culture. Really. Yes. If we want to see these scores improve, we're going to have to start doing things differently. We can't just have a blanket approach and think, okay, well, it's working over here. Well, why is it not working here? Is it the principal or the teachers? I mean, it could be none of those. It could just be that, hey, the school just doesn't know how to tackle this issue because it's foreign to them. What we would really like to see is the district engage parents and honor them as the first educator that they are for their child. Parents know more than we're giving them credit for. 
and they can help their child more than we're allowing them to. Yo sé que el Distrito Unificado de Fresno tiene muchos programas y muy buenos, pero yo creo que deben de hacer un seguimiento de cómo están los jóvenes progresando. Si un programa no está teniendo éxito, que se cambie, pero que siempre estén continuando, siempre vigilando eh, la, el progreso de nuestros estudiantes. It's in your hands. Are they going to stick right there all day? Or are you going to put responsibilities in your kids what they have to do? Everything have their time. You know, time to go to school, come back, do homework, and be in looking at the TV, looking at the computer. You organize that. And sometimes we leave it for them. No, you manage. The kids don't manage that. Well, I think the lack of outrage is the lack of awareness to begin with. I think if you look at the demographics of our district uh, from, I think from south of maybe Shaw, uh, the demographics change quite a bit than north. I mean, you've always heard the tale of uh, the tale of two, two Fresnos. A lot of the parents down in the south part of town uh, may not be aware. And so what they know is when they go to their parent teacher conferences and they hear about their own kid. And it's unfortunate that sometimes I think uh, the schools may pass children that, that shouldn't be. I've heard over and over that there are children that uh, should not have uh, transitioned to the next grade and, and they did. And so I think it's a lack of uh, awareness. Uh, perhaps it's not also something that the media covers as much. I mean, I think uh, up until recently, just with the whole COVID and lockdown, I think there's been more eyes and ears on it. But uh, historically, I don't think it's been a top of mind issue. The average parent like doesn't know that if my kid's not reading on grade level in third grade, they're four times less likely to graduate high school. That's, that's not common knowledge. Um, and I think it's something uh, that Go Public Schools does for families. It's really important um, in raising up these concerns. But we would really love to see the conversation begin to shift uh, now that schools are reopened. And let's re-engage in the conversation about how our students are doing academically. Research really tells us that parents being engaged, being advocates on behalf of their children, understanding how to navigate the district and communicate with teachers is going to help that academic performance of students. We want those successful kids. We need to be there. We need to be there no matter what we do. Like, even though sometimes that I have to go to work and you have to break yourself in a lot of pieces, you have to be there for your kids, the work, the house, everything, your appointments. You have to break in pieces, but you can do it. Concerned parents are as close to a magic bullet that Fresno Unified can hope for. There's no miracle cure to improve student performance. Investing in early education and bringing willing parents into the fold will help tomorrow's students. Today's students will enter the workplace with a paper diploma, overwhelmingly lacking the reading, writing, and math skills required for success in college and the professional world. But what do today's employers have to say about the quality of workforce educated by Fresno Unified? On the next GV Docs.